Are you bored of always playing the same type of archers? Just fire and forget does not cut it for you anymore? But you still want to be able to clear red maps, the endgame labyrinth and Adziri comfortably? Well, I decided to add a little bit of a twist to my archer build. I chose Pathfinder as the ascendancy class, because with its flask-centric playstyle, it adds an additional dimension to the otherwise pretty straightforward bow gameplay. The Pathfinder class is incredibly powerful, but the power is not as apparent as that of the raider or the deadeye might be at first glance. But when giving it a second look, you will find an endgame scaling subclass that trumps most ascendancies you can choose in the game by a mile. I admit, it does need a bit of setup to get going. And while I chose this class as my league starting build, there are many better choices to start out from scratch with. But if you are looking to make your way to red maps, take on Aziri or the Uber Love and push beyond where you would normally stop playing a character, this build is a fantastic choice for both hardcore and softcore as it does just not stop getting stronger and stronger in endgame. In this build guide I will go over equipment and gem setups, the passive tree I made and the ascendancy options, possible flask setups and of course how to level and get the build started. The gear I have is overall pretty standard, some physical damage and crit chance on my jewelry, intelligence on the helmet and a lot of movement speed on boots, because blink arrow as our movement skill does have a cooldown. A rustic sash with weapon alley, two mods like reduced flask charges used or increased flask effect duration. I use Malagaris Virtuosity for the crit boost and a drill neck for the huge damage increase. My chess piece is Kintsugi. This prophecy specific chess piece is a great budget option if you do not want to afford a lightning coil as an evasion dodge character. It grants you mitigation against hard hitting single blows, which is what evasion is weakest against. In endgame I'm using the bow Reach of the Council. This bow, besides having good attack speed and 360 physical DPS, adds no less than 4 additional arrows to every skill that uses arrows. This is fantastic for every bow skill which would normally use greater multiple projectiles such as lightning arrow, tornado shot or ice shot, but also for skills which would normally love to use GMP but cannot really deal with the last damage modifier which this support gem normally has, such as barrage. Altogether this makes the bow a fantastic choice for endgame, even with its low crit chance which we compensate by linking the skill to the increased critical strike support gem and using a diamond flask which, thanks to being a pathfinder, is up all the time. This character is using Herald of Ice linked to Curse on Hit and Assassin's Mark to gain power charges, Hatred for damage and Blood Rage and Val Haste linked with increased duration for higher clear speed. The cast when damage taken immortal call setup helps against rapid physical hits and works really well with the Kintsugi armor. You can also add an Enfeeble, an Arctic Breath or even the new spell Vortex to your cast when damage taken setup to further weaken dangerous enemies and slow them down. My skill of choice for AoE clear is Ice Shot. Due to its good AoE clear, reliable freezing of enemies and slowing them down via chilled ground. It also deals really well with physical reflect rares, which makes it a superb choice for hardcore. I link it with increased critical strikes, physical projectile attack damage, pierce, added fire and WED, also known as weapon elemental damage. For single target I use Barrage, linked with increased critical strikes, PPAD, pierce, faster attacks and poison. I chose Barrage over Blast Rain in Endgame. Not only does Barrage feel like using a machine gun, which is extremely fun, it also benefits more from the additional arrows provided by the Reach of the Council Bow, has an easier time of dealing with Elemental Reflect as it does not convert damage, and synergizes extremely well with the Drill Neck Quiver and our passive point selection. One of them being the King of the Hill, which adds knockback to every critical strike we do. Barrage's rapid hitting nature allows us to knock back melee enemies continuously, and more importantly it restores Blast Charges in conjunction with Master Surgeon. All our flasks have a 10% chance to gain a charge when we crit. And when Barrage crits, with its rapid fire of arrows, it fills up all our flasks very quickly. Master Surgeon is also the ascendancy pass if you want to take in crew, as it is probably the most powerful one on the Pathfinder tree. For your third ascendancy, I recommend Nature's Boon. Elemental damage from monsters has been buffed this patch and 8% reduced elemental damage taken is equal to 2% all resistance at 75% resists. And it even gets better when you have lower resists, which is great for minus max maps. For the Uber Labyrinth, which this character is capable of completing once you get around 2.5k life and of course are using a Kintsugi, you can literally take any of the other passives. On the Pathfinder Ascendancy Class 3, as they are all fantastic, I personally chose Master Alchemist to free up flask mods by not needing elemental status immunity such as anti-freeze anymore. For leveling in normal, you can either take Veteran Boyer or Master Herbalist to make leveling easier, knowing you will respec out of it once you finish the Cruel Labyrinth though. Or you can just take Nature's Adrenaline, which will not add as much power to a character while leveling, but it saves you 10 points of respecking. 
Leveling this character is very smooth in the early game if you have some leveling gear. You can use leveling uniques such as Wrath Reach, Storm Cloud, Death's Harp and Death's Opus to carry you all the way to maps. For leveling use Shrapnel Shot after killing Hillock until you can pick up Blast Rain in Act 3. After killing General Gravicius, you can start using Ice Shot once you got a Fall Link with PPAD, LMP or GMP and Pierce you can also use Blast Rain all the way to Cruel and even further if you like it better. I linked it with Conk Fact, PPAD and Added Fire for great single target clear and also solid AoE. The build will feel a little bit weak right before you make the switch to a crit build. Make sure to use a Diamond Flask around that time to help you out a bit. A Basalt Flask is great to help you survive through leveling and in endgame maps. For the Act 2 Bandit quest I helped Oak in Normal and Creighton in Cruel and Merciless. Leveling passive trees can be found in the video description below. Finally, for endgame flask setups I use an instant life flask of course. It has poison removal as my chaos resistance is pretty low. For physical mitigation and great damage increase I run a taste of hate. This flask also helps me greatly against physical reflect and elemental reflect. As this build deals mainly cold damage when it comes to the elemental side. I also use a serious promise for extra damage and leech. You can also use a vessel of Vingtar and even get Valpak for endgame maps to be able to leech tank most bosses very comfortably. I run a Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline for very high move speed. Because of all the flask effectiveness we get, this flask alone grants me around 100% increased move speed. And the last flask is a Diamond Flask of Warding to remove curses. Greatly increases our crit chance from about 55-60% to 60 to way over 80%. Also, try to roll increased duration, reduced flask charges used, or increased charges gained on as many flasks as possible. Don't forget to put 20 quality on your flasks using glass blowers baubles, as you should do anyways on all your characters in late game. Subscribe for more Path of Exile content. I am Yoji, and I will see you soon.